Inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Vines. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Vines, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Today's conversation is with Paul Edwards, a content ghostwriter for faith-based influencers, entrepreneurs, and executives. Now, Paul admits that he is a redeemed egomaniac that suffered from pride, envy, judgment, and self-righteousness, but he learned what it means to surrender to God in his life and in his business. Now, one of the things I love about this chat is that Paul is a relatively new business owner. And so you get to hear about these beginning stages of his shift and even the things that he still struggles with from time to time. I think it's important for us to share the breadth and the diversity of the stories and the adventures that people are having with God. It's a really honest conversation that reveals the beauty of growing in your relationship with the Lord, shifting your mindset and exchanging your plans for God's best. I was introduced to Paul by Aaron Walker, and Aaron is the founder of View From The Top, and he is a two-time previous guest on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. You'll hear Paul mention Aaron multiple times in this interview, so I wanted to give you that context up front because Aaron has been an instrumental part of Paul's story and the launch of his ghostwriting business that is yielded to and led by God. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure that you know all about our newest podcast, Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Insider. It's for those who love this podcast, but want to go deeper and hear from me as well as others on the KDE operations team about what we're experiencing and what we're learning behind the scenes with Kingdom Driven LLC as we partner with God in growing this movement. I started this podcast uh, in January because I wanted to have a place where we can share how we are walking the walk, how we are navigating the challenges, how we are working by the power of God's grace, and also answer questions from our listeners that will help them in their own journeys in business. So head on over to kdeinsider.com. That's KDE for Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur kdeinsider.com for all the details and to join us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Insider. Now let's get started with today's conversation with Paul Edwards. Listen in and enjoy. Paul Edwards, how are you, sir? It's great to be here, Shay. I'm doing, uh, I've never been better to answer your question. And how about you? (laughs) I'm doing really well. And so you are in Washington State, yes? Washington State, yes. So I've been looking forward to our chat uh, we're just going to have a, just an exploration of what it's looked like for you in business to just be really led by God and the things that you're doing. Why don't you share, share just a little bit about yourself and also how you got started in business? Well, I like to say uh, sometimes people like to play the game uh, two truths and a lie. And you, <laughs> and you do like uh, two facts about yourself that are true and one that isn't. Now, here are the true facts since we're not playing the game on the podcast. <laughs> Unless you um, want to. <laughs> well, I, only with respect for a limited time. Um, I, I, I have lived in five different countries. I hold three different passports and I speak two, two different languages, although I'm working on learning self-teaching Hebrew now, so I might get up to three languages eventually. But, um, And yes, I come from this um, very... I w- I guess it's, I don't think of it as unique, but to Americans it is because my father was British, my mother is South African, and I was born in Canada. I'm not, a, I'm not American born. I'm, I'm a naturalized citizen, but I, uh, but I came via Alberta. But the funny thing is, I also speak very, very good Spanish. And so I call myself a Spanish speaking immigrant, <laughs> which is... <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Which is, you know, that the people immediately raise eyebrows at that. And uh, anyway, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of fascinating background there, I suppose, for the average person listening. But uh, yeah, it, it, what what ended up happening was um, I grew up in a pretty godless environment. My mom did uh, attempt to raise me nominally Catholic, and we did go to Catholic services up until about I was age eleven or twelve. 
but then I spent probably a decade in atheism and outright rejection of God, um, which was my, my dad's path at the time. I don't know that he still is. He now lives in the Philippines and I don't get to talk to him about it much. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I emerged into young adulthood, very godless and, um, and there were consequences that went with that. Um, but I, as is often the case, as you'll find happens in scripture, um, the Lord looks at someone like that and says, I can walk right through that and turn this guy into a miracle, a walking miracle. Yeah. And that's what he did. And so to make a long story short, through a succession of um, mentors and my uncle, my mother's brother, who was a devout and is a devout believer, um, I became an, an evangelical Christian at age 22, miraculous conversion, uh, you might say. And um, after that, shortly after that, um, I had been, it was right after 9-11. So I had been thinking oh, wow. about joining the military. Um, yeah. And now I had even more ammunition to power those life-altering decisions that we young men are so good at making in the blink of an, in the blink yeah. of an eye. <laughs> and that sort of fast forwarded to meeting my wife in Germany. She was a civilian and I was a um, soldier and we went to the same church and we came back to Washington as a married couple. Her family is in Seattle. So I finished out my time uh, in the military here and then we bought a home and I've lived here 14 years now. Um, but during the time that I was in the military, I also lived in Germany while I was stationed there. And I did two deployments to Iraq. And oh, so wow. It's been, it's been at least 12, or 12 months or more each time. Wow. Well, thanks for your service. My pleasure. Now, when did you start in business? Like, what was your, when did your entrepreneurial journey begin? Um, I'm going to say that the it, it, actually going into business for myself, um, I, I tried a short handed version of that in 2009, 2010, because I had left the military. The first job I got, they dropped me within 90 days, never gave me a reason why. And so I thought, well, maybe this is a chance to um, start up a podcast and start up a, you know, I, I wanted to be a political commentator at the time. Big okay. mistake, but I wanted to. I'll own it. And um, it didn't go well. Um, and I ended up having to get a job. And that's what led me into the insurance industry, which is where I learned uh, networking and building relationships and all that, which is what the book's about. So yeah. probably over a decade into it, but had to go a very circuitous route to get to 2018, where I got fired from my last insurance job. And that was when I said, okay, then I'm going for this and I'm not looking back until, you know, the Lord makes it impossible for me to keep moving forward. Yeah. And then what is it that you're doing now? Well, now I've, uh, I've found my way into writing content for Aaron, our friend, uh, which has begun to grow legs, in, so to speak. Uh, other people started to notice the content that he was putting out on a continual, frequent almost daily or weekly basis. And these people knew him well enough to say, you don't have that kind of free time. <laughs> <laughs> Where's this coming from? <laughs> so who's, who, what's the magic here? Cause it sounds like it's coming from him, right? Yes. That's the, yes. That's He's the, captured that, his voice. That's the ability I have. I can yes. sit here and write a, write an article and sound like him while I write it and say, you know, I just don't understand what these people are thinking <laughs> half the time, because let me tell you something, Shay, <laughs> you sound just like him. <laughs> yeah. And he wouldn't mind that I said that, by the way. I he know knows he would. I know he would. He would love it. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, I have that ability to write and sound like other and, 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 and come across in print like other people yeah. as well. So, yeah. Um, so, anyway, yeah, that's, that's what that's led to a sort of, a, I guess, a freelance writing business, yeah. which is just wonderful. It gives me the ability to, work from home and continue building relationships like I always have and mentor the young men in the church that I go to, but mm -hmm. uh, as well as being a family man. Talk to me about what it has looks like for you to really partner with God in the work that you're doing. You know, does not just say, we talk about a lot about how a lot of times as business owners, people will say, so just kind of do business the way of the world, all the ways that they learned all the strategies or whatever, and then just do it and then just say, okay, to God be the glory. <laughs> Yeah. But perhaps I've done that outside of just the intimacy and the relationship with him because he's our ultimate strategist, right? And so uh, 
Talk to me about what this has looked like for you in business. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll preface this by saying if, if you're the type who says, oh, okay, I'll just follow all the world's advice and all of the, you know, invest in all the gurus and do what they do and do whatever they tell me to do and then just say, to God be the glory, good luck with that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's not how he works. Did no, you ever least, try that? Uh, that was the first uh, over a year. Let's see, June of 18. It was the first 18 months and okay. I'm now in, I'm now in month 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is good. So that was the first 18 months. Mm-hmm. We're in month 20. So that means we're going to get a lot of really great insight on what this shift and transition has looked like for you. You see, when, when people hear, um, when, when you tell people that pride is the number one deadly sin, they think a strutting posturing egomaniac it's all about me and and yes that is prideful but that's not all that it encompasses yeah. very often you can be a very shy introverted type of person and still be very proud and i'm kind of in between i would call myself I, I, what was the term i was trying to come up with the other day um <laughs> inkstrovert <laughs> <laughs> right i'm a, i'm yeah. a mix i i yes. i love solitude and silence for my work but i like to get up on in in front of a crowd and give a public speech too yeah okay anyway not beside the point um you can be very uh socially benign and still be very very proud yeah and the and what what the way that i discovered this shay was that i found the Lord over and over and over again stalling me and stymieing me and blocking me from doing what I thought it was he wanted me to do. But the truth was I hadn't really consulted him. And in the meantime, I'd spent a ton of money and traveled all these miles. And, you know, and, and the only thing that was really working the entire time, my book became a bestseller, invested a bunch of money in that. They did a great job. It, it did what it was supposed to. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get the results that I was hoping for. A lot of, a lot of it was because I, I just ran up against more problems that I couldn't solve. Um, the only thing that was working the whole time for me was my podcast. Because what was happening there was I was taking the lower seat at the table. I was taking the position of the interviewer. I was taking the position of I'm, I'm coming here to learn. And sooner or later, somebody was going to come across my path that was going to see a combination of the, the difficulty I was facing, the inability in my own strength to solve the problems, and was going to extend an offer. And Aaron was that person. Wow. But the rest of everything I did, just, it just didn't go anywhere for me. And the reason was that I had, I, I had a long road to hoe to learn what it truly means to submit and surrender and release outcomes and release my agenda and release my my vision or my idea of how things ought to be yeah and 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 i don't know that everybody has to go through the same degree of that because people people struggle to different degrees in different areas but i am a recovering egomaniac there's yeah. no two ways about it right <laughs> I struggle with pride and envy and judgment and self-righteousness. And I'm not ashamed to admit it because I found with the enemy, um, he can't accuse you of what you've already confessed to. Come on. So, Come so on. I, just, I just let it out there and say, you know, yes. if, you, if you don't like it, you can always go hang out with someone else. I, suppose. <laughs> I love it. A redeemed egomaniac. Uh, you're in the flesh. Yeah. Not okay, that so, flesh, but yeah. Right. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Talk to me about, you were talking about how, you know, we have these perceptions of what pride can look like. What were the things that the Lord was revealing to you as, like things that you wouldn't have necessarily looked at as pride, mm. but he would kind of shine a light on that and say, yeah, right there, that's pride. What were some of the things that were showing up for you? I would, I'm trying to remember whether this came to me through a scripture I would have to look back in my journal, but here's what, here's the substance of it. No matter whether it came from a scripture or wherever it came from. Yeah. I was brought back to a memory at age 21, 22. I had, this is when I was living in London 
and I was just about to become a believer for the first time. And I was working for a company called OneTel, which is uh, the number one competitor to British Telecom, or they were at the time. And I went into this job with exactly the kind of service-oriented attitude that the best teachers I know, Aaron being one of them, Rabbi Daniel Lappin would say the same thing. If you make serving God's other children your number one priority, just like any other parent, that makes God smile. Yeah. And he rewards that. So I got promoted four times in seven months of working for this company. But on the fourth time I got promoted, I got proud. I, I went from, I'm here to serve. I'll work my butt off. I'll do whatever you ask. You know, uh, and, and I will make sure that every single thing I do is the utmost quality every time I do it. To, you know, I, they really owe me more than this. They really should be promoting me much faster. They should be giving me the position I want. They should be exalting me. I went from I should be serving others to I should be getting served by others. But the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. Yeah. Right? But I didn't know that at the time. Right. And that, and that became sort of a, a very subtle, I didn't experience much of at the time, just a very subtle agreement that went underground in my soul, but yeah. began to operate. It began to operate. And as I went through, uh, I, I, I moved on from that job, mainly because they didn't promote me fast enough after the fourth time they promoted me. <laughs> <laughs> in seven months. Do you like how I'm just so casual about this? Like nobody admits to this stuff, right? That's, that's what I've had to learn to do. It's the yes. only answer I have to what otherwise starts to enter into my heart. So uh, I, I went on to a sales job at a, at a fitness club in, in, in the financial district of London and had a blow up there and got fired because of my pride. And then I went into the military and not only is it an environment filled with people who are dealing with a lot of pride. But then there was prideful Paul Edwards thrust into that environment. No prior experience. No one in my family had served. I knew nothing about the army or anything like that. And it wasn't too long before I had some pretty scornful, derisive thoughts floating around in my head about my fellow soldiers and about all, you know, everything that was happening to me. So there was a very long process that I had to go through there. And the insurance business was much the same way. I, I resented God because I had wanted to go into radio and broadcasting and it wouldn't work. So I ended up having to take a job. Yeah. And um, I went through six years in the insurance business. And, and to be honest with you, I, did, I didn't learn much there either. <laughs> Not, a, not any great knowledge, right? I, right, I learned right. little bits here and there. Sometimes sure. it worked, but for the most part, it, it wasn't working. It, it, what, what changed was overcoming my addiction because I, I never, I, I white knuckled my way out of pornography for 12 years and then I found myself back in it. And by this time, married with two kids, which yeah. was really bad. And I, and I just, um, by going to Sex Addicts Anonymous and by beginning to be vocal to people who would listen, people I trusted and all that about this is, this is just the honest to God truth. I wish it was prettier than this. It's not. Yeah. This is, this is a part of me that I want to be free of, but unless I tell the truth about it, I'll never be free about it because it lives in the darkness, right? It lives in lies. Yeah. So, um, but that changed something. I, I, and, and what happened was I was able to tell the truth about more and more things and, and not feel like, oh, what if they find out about that? You know, nobody's going to believe, nobody's going to like me. Nobody's going to want to be near me. It couldn't have been further from the truth. It, 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 it draws people to you. They're like, yeah. somebody actually tells the truth tells about the this, truth. <laughs> you know? Um, but you have to get it over the fear first. And I was over the fear because I was so sick and tired of, of, of living this double life and saying, I, I know I signed up to be in the kingdom. I didn't mm -hmm. sign up to go back to my vomit for the rest of my life. So there's got to be a way out of this. And if, if that means I've got to tell the unvarnished truth, so be it. So that's what I did. But anyway, to answer your question, um, 
that set off a new chain reaction in my life to the point that over the course of 2019 through constant a, a constant life of discipleship devotions and fasting and praying and worshiping and and soaking up knowledge and and hearing his voice learning to really recognize his voice um he got me to realize that 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 uh, i had set off a 20 year cycle of that was that was inhibiting me from transcending my circumstances wow so i was earning less at 39 than i was at 21 even though by 39 i had the military experience the college degree the wife the children i myself could contribute no more than i ever had at 21 yeah without all those other things and that didn't make sense but what happens over time is you begin to take on i'm i'm rambling a little bit here but no keep going <laughs> what happens over time when you operate in pride is you the results are very wounding and so you take on ungodly beliefs and one of them that I just had to let go of in December was I'm not worthy. I guess I'm not worthy of being paid more than minimum wage. Other people are other people who dishonor God to his face, get more than minimum wage, but not Paul Edwards. Right. That's the, the thing. <laughs> right. That's the thing. The enemy wants you to believe. Yeah. No. In fact, I was just, what happens is you, 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 you operate according to that agreement that you make deep within your soul. subconsciously. it's not like you're walking around saying that, but you're believing it. And when you believe that, the spirit cannot come in there and, and heal that and begin to operate correctly. So wow. maybe that gives you a better picture of what it was going does. on. It does. Something that you said that really stood out to me was that it was all, you said it set off a series of being able to tell the truth in other areas. So it was like, so what probably seemed to be one of the toughest things to kind of come clean about or to share with others, as soon as you released that, that, that provided the freedom for you than other areas to be able to recognize things where it's like, well, gosh, I can just, I can release that. I could share that or whatever. And then it has no power yeah. over you, no power over your thoughts. Right. I love that so much. So it's like it, it had this whole effect that goes into other areas of your life. So I'm curious to know, because this is such a fresh shift. I mean, you talked about in 2019, how you kind of spent that year just like growing in your relationship with the Lord, learning how to hear his voice, to know his truth versus, you know, lies in your head and all of those things. And mm -hmm. then transitioning and saying, okay, I'm going to get rid of the pride and I'm going to embrace what you've got for me, God, as you know, see what that looks like. Talk to me about what that walk has been when you said, okay, I'm shifting to, I'm focusing on my relationship with you. I'm going to kind of exhaust you over the plans that I thought were the things that I wanted. And I want to kind of see what's on your heart. Talk to me about what that's been like for you and how that has kind of led you into what you're doing now. Well, you know, uh, I was writing a blog for Aaron this morning and I said, um, people, one of the things that I wrote in there, this came to me, this I think is directly from the hand of God. Um, and I forget, I'm forgetting the way, exact way I worded it now, but people don't tend to be able to uh, act in a, in, in a, in a positive, or in this case, as in a, in a, in a godly way to something they don't have language for. In other words, if you can't think something that you can then put on the tongue and, and on the lips and transmit into the spiritual realm, as well as the physical. So, so you, I, I'm just using this as, as an example. You sure. have to have a language to do this kind of stuff because your question was, um, how has it looked day to day? Yeah, uh, to 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 walk this out, and I, and I would say that the, the main tool that we have at our disposal that can't be taken away from us is our thoughts and our words, right? So it's it's a day to day process of rising early in the morning before my two hours before my wife and kids are up, mm -hmm. and not just reading the word, but writing and speaking to him and saying and, and understanding what pleases him because he doesn't want some guy who just comes to him and says, Lord, give me this, give me that, give me that. I need this. I need that. I need money. I need a car. I need a house. That's not what he wants. And, and, and endless chatter. That's why he said, don't just babble on like the Gentiles do. They don't even know who they're praying to, right? Your father knows what you need. But the question is, do you know what you need? <laughs> 
because most people think I just need more stuff or I just need a, a, a spouse or I just need a better sex life or I just need, you know, I need more, uh, more money coming in. No, no, you need more of him yeah. in you. And, and the only way you get more of him in you is by taking more of you out of the equation. And, the, and so I, I, painfully practical, simple, simple words. I, I, I crucify my flesh. Yeah. I renounce the idols I have worshipped. I, I, I reject fear and despair and cynicism and resignation and hatred and bitterness and lust and greed and envy and, all, and pride, most especially pride, <laughs> right? I even named them. <laughs> I, I, named, I named these, these little thugs that stalk me. So I, I call them Proud Mary, Bitter Herb, Ye Old Religious Spirit. Uh, you know, I've got nicknames for them, derisive nicknames, but nicknames nonetheless. <laughs> and you pronounce every single one of them. I confront them. Yes. I say, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. I've given you a nickname. You better tell me your real name if you want to talk to me because they never tell you their name, right? Don't, they don't want to be identified. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Cast them out. And the other thing is the self, right? That I, I renounce agreements I have made. I renounce thinking I'm not worthy. In fact, um, some of the men in the older men in the church that I know helped me come up with this. And I've started it as an affirmation. And I say, as God's man, I can trust you to lead me as a glorious, amplified, prolific provider. Ooh, that's good. Will you say it again? As God's man, I can trust you to lead me as a glorious, amplified, and prolific provider. Uh, I, I started saying that uh, December, halfway through December, and January 8th, my first client closed. And now I'm getting, and now, I, I mean, it's, it's exponentially different. It's not, it's not where I want it to be yet, but it's exponentially different from what I was making, well, which was, was zero. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That's good. That's so good. I, does, that, does that sort of illustrate the picture there? And, and, and I'll just say, if anybody's listening and wondering, where do you learn stuff like this? There's, there's, there's groups out there that do it. Um, John Eldridge and Ransomed Heart is where I learn probably 90% of my prayer language. Um, and they're an excellent resource for that. So shameless plug, shameless plug on behalf of my mentors. That's good. No, I love it. So how did you shift? You know, you were talking about how in the first kind of 18 months, it was like, okay, well, I know the formula. I've learned the formula, I know how to do the things, right? So I'm going to go do the things and just like, and have this expectation that when I go do the things that everything's going to come together. And mm -hmm. then you saw that some aspects of those things came together, but others did not. Now, when you think about how you focus in your business in terms of uh, from a marketing perspective or the, you know, the, the blueprints that, that are out there perspective, how do you function and strategize and plan and all of those things now versus then? What does it look like? Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer this in two ways. Um, I went, uh, when I was 21, right around the same time, despite my professional Indis indiscretions about pride, my, I made a very, very good personal decision. And that personal decision was, I'm going to leave my love life in the hands of God. I'm not going to pursue, even though I want to, I, my intent at the time and still, and, ha and has been since, is, is marriage, right? Yeah. Even though I have the sincerest of intentions, I'm going to go out there and pick the wrong person. So I told God, I said, no, you pick her. You know, you want this to happen, you make it happen. I'm not doing it. I'm going over here and serving you as a single. Case closed. About a year later, I'm in Germany, single soldier, and there she is. I thought she was married because we were in a church that one half of it was all the single soldiers who weren't deployed, and the other half was the wives of the soldiers who were. Right. <laughs> so I had no idea she was single, wasn't looking, et cetera, et cetera you know, go there for a few months. And this is a, this is like one of these kind of fundamentalist churches where the ladies wear long skirts and you can only listen to certain types of music. Right. Uh huh. And the pastor comes to me and says, nudge, nudge, you have an opportunity and you should take advantage of it and go and ask her out. Well, if the pastor of the fundamentalist congregation <laughs> is telling you go date the girl, I take it as a pretty good sign 
That's the Lord. Right? <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> All this to say, Shay, it's it's a it's a it's a lifestyle of I don't know what the answer is, but I know I'm not going to come up with it <laughs> on my own. Right now, I might get used in parts of coming up with it. It will certainly affect me. Yeah. But the Father is always initiating us. He's always wanting to walk us into something. He doesn't. He's not standing back and saying, "Good luck, son." Right. And and even and and Jesus says the same thing. He says, "My sheep listen to my voice. I go on ahead of them." And they follow me. He's out in front of us. And if we learn to hear his voice, um, very often we will move in the right direction, really without thinking about it. We'll be just busy doing what we normally do to stay close to the shepherd. And we'll find ourselves suddenly in this, in these green pastures. Yeah. So that's the analogy. Now the, the, the practical on the business side has been... <laughs> I, I fundamentally reject marketing strategies where the assumption is on on the responsibility of the entrepreneur, the salesperson, whatever, to force the market to react one way or the other. That is not how human beings work, right? Um. And so in the insurance industry, as a practical example of this, they would have goals. You've got to sell this amount of auto and this amount of home and especially this amount of life insurance every month, or you don't get paid commission. Okay. Well, the problem is I'm not the one buying. I'm only the one right. selling. There's two people involved in this transaction, right? Yes. At least. And uh, one of the best pieces of advice I got, practical advice from a godly man I knew through a mastermind at the time, was... Um, don't set goals based on what you cannot control because you'll always come up short, right? Or you'll, or you'll exceed it way beyond what you thought you would. And now you're like, okay, what, uh, you know, now what number do I put in there? Right? <laughs> what random? <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's like playing. It's like going to a casino, but I can always set a goals about set goals about, okay, this week I'm going to this many networking groups. This week, I'm sending this many handwritten notes. Nobody but myself can stop me from accomplishing that. Nobody can tell me, can, uh, can interfere with that. I mean, yeah, I could get in a car accident on the way right. there, but all Generally else being speaking. equal, yeah, all else being equal, you can't not meet a goal that is strictly within your, your decision as to whether or not it happens. And what I found when I did that was business flowed just as freely as it had before. In fact, it flowed better because I was doing all these things that I knew were, were good marketing strategies and led to referrals and people reaching out and saying, I need help with insurance and so forth and so on. So you fast forward to today, you never stop building relationships. And that's why my book is, is truer now than it ever has been, um, for me especially. Because all through the 17 months that I had no income, in this entrepreneurial journey started for me June, to, June, June, 2018. It's now January, 2020, and I'm finally starting to earn an income all throughout that time. I never stopped building relationships I never stopped podcasting. I never stopped networking. I never stopped reaching out to people. I never stopped adding value to them. Um, one of the reasons Aaron started to escalate the relationship with me was he came and interviewed on my, on my podcast for the first time in March of 19, March, April. And I knew because he told me on the post-interview chat that later in the year, he was going to launch the Mastermind Playbook. <clears throat> so I made a, a note of that, but I also thought, I, you, you know, as well as I do, you meet Aaron and you just love him, right? Yes. You just, I mean, you, he's just such a pleasure to, to be around and to interact with. And so I, I thought to myself, I'm going to do what I've always done with him. And that is, I'm going to go through my Rolodex and say, he should know this person. He should know this person. He should know this person. And I'm going to introduce him to all of them. Mm -hmm. And so I would just send him about one or two emails a month. Not too much, but just yeah. here and there. Aaron, you should introduce this person. And I had this wonderful template that I used. I stole it from Craig Ballantyne, <laughs> <laughs> who stole it from someone else. Right. <laughs> um, to introduce them. And he started getting on other podcasts that he didn't know about. He started building relationships with people in his own hometown he didn't know. Yeah. 
um, he got connected with people in in significant uh, influential positions in ministry, right? These are people that I knew and he didn't know them. So when he came back for the second interview, we, we did the interview and then in the post-interview chat this time, he said to me, you have introduced me to so many good people. I, I just, I can't thank you enough for that. And, and, and I really want to do something for you. What can I do for you? And at first I did my normal thing because right by now I'm fully on the agreement. I'm not worthy of anything. So I just, right. oh, you don't have to do anything. I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be okay. And, and, and he's, <laughs> this, this will stick with me for a long time. He said, he said, Paul, will you do me a favor and unhumble yourself for a minute? And, uh, and he basically had to press the issue and said, you need to tell me how I can help you. Well, eventually, you know, we figured out a way that I could start writing content for him and, you know, get more into the organization. I, I joined his mastermind and lo and behold, you know, it wasn't long before I saw that, that everything I had been trying to build was again, a house of cards. I hadn't really done all of the diligence that I could. I'd done some of it. I wasn't being totally lazy or anything, but I, I hadn't, I didn't know enough and I didn't know that I didn't know enough. Right. And it just reinforced to me again, Shay, and I don't, there's people out there who would say, I can build an empire on my own. No problem. Great. I'm uh, lucky you. I'm not. uh, The only way I succeed is when I'm living in good relationships with other people. And so it transitioned. I've still got my podcast. I've still got my book and I still would like to lead mastermind groups one day. But he said, you really, you you know, he said what I already knew. You really got to make some money too. You really got to get out of this, you know, perpetual failure cycle. And so I started writing for him and, and pretty soon somebody, somebody's radar went up and then I had offers paid offers to, to, you know, to, to continue doing that. And so that's where it is today. It's good. Long it's circuitous good. journey, but yeah. Yeah. I always think it's fun to talk to people in various stages of these journeys because you get, you get a lot of interesting perspective of what it's like to just walk with God, to trust God, to allow him to point out the things that help to sharpen us so that we're prepared for what he has for us. And it's been really good to hear it's kind of what, what you've walked through and what you're continuing to walk through. So I appreciate you sharing. It's either James or Peter where he says, um, yeah, I think it's James. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's uh, perseverance leads to good character, which leads to, uh, I forget exactly. I know, I know, I know, what's I know what's it when I see it. To, yes. <laughs> but the end of that is very telling. He says, so that you may be perfect, lacking no good thing. Yes. Right. So that you may walk through, you know, because now what's happening is um, the, the, the money situation is finally resolving itself. And so now I'm like, I'm at, a, I'm at a point where, oh, I recognize this. He gave me another new name. That's a critical point on the map for me, you know. Because when he gives me a new name, he's not talking about a name that describes where I am. He talks about it's a name that describes where I'm going. Yeah. And so I said, okay, so <laughs> not much of a recess there. Trial, next trial is already underway. And he, <laughs> said, he said, exactly. <laughs> um, but what's, what's different now is how much more aware of what's actually going on I am. So, you know, again, I like to tell people this because people are still thinking, well, he must be talking about two years ago. No, I'm talking about 48 hours, right? Um, Saturday night, I just, I had a situation crop up with my family and I just blew up, lost my temper. And, you know, and suddenly that tyrant was back again. But I apologized and sought forgiveness way faster. (laughs) Right. Way faster. And I'm in, I'm in living in community now. So I, I tell it to my young men's group. Yes. And I tell it to my mastermind group with Aaron. I, I don't hold back. And I, cause I'm like, I'm not coming on my, on my next mastermind call and lying to your faces. You know, I'm, I'm not doing that. 
that you know what kind of darkness that unleashes in my soul. Yeah. For me to for me to consciously lie or omit, you know, and pretend like everything's fine. I'm not going back to to wearing that poser costume. That's good. So, so that's that's the thing is that you begin to walk forward into the next chapter of life, and you could get pessimistic and think, "Oh boy, another trial! Don't I ever get a break?" No, it's not like that. It's um, now you're ready, boy. Now you're ready to handle something even more significant. Yeah. You know, now I can give you this next layer of the kingdom. Yeah. And, and, and there's, there's trials and challenges that go with that. There's also great privileges and blessings and things that you never see coming. Yes. That go with it. So. That's it. That's good. Well, then I know, you know, you have a website that talks about these new services that, that you've been offering, that you have these clients for with this new business. Where do people yes. go? Yeah. If you go to the Paul S Edwards.com. So my middle initial is S as in Simon. Um, the paulsedwards.com forward slash kingdom driven entrepreneur. And, uh, and I'm going to get you that link in just a bit. I realized just as you said that, oops, I forgot to create the link, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have it for you. You can get a free copy of business beyond business. There's also a couple of freebies in there. I've got a, a personal assessment. So this is just a tool where you sort of evaluate yourself. Then the guys really like this one. Um, a spouse assessment. This Ooh. is where you get to ask the person that you're married to, what's it like to live with me? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the last part we have there is a goals and dreams worksheet. It, it sort of helps you figure out, okay, what, what, what kind of goals and dreams do I have? What kind of hopes do I have? And, you know, just helps you map that out and think about it a little bit. So those are all available. ThePaulSEdwards.com forward slash kingdom driven entrepreneur. Nice. And you have a podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Influencer Networking Secrets. Influencer available, Networking Secrets. Got it. Available everywhere fine podcasts are sold for free. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Paul. It's been a delight chatting with you and I appreciate you sharing uh, so transparently. Like you said, that's freedom and you're keeping your freedom. And so you are sharing. Shay, it's been a, it's been a, a pleasure. Uh, I, I never get, I, I don't hardly ever get to talk about this and I don't mean to extend it beyond a reasonable amount of time here, but this is a, uh, you, you're onto something here, my friend, because if you give people the opportunity to pull back the curtain and go into this degree of detail about how the kingdom affects business, it's, it, a lot of people just aren't really curious about that. I'll leave with that, but. I love great. it. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com. 